Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gear 204 here, and welcome back to another Minecraft 401 tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and doing part 2 of our World War 1 trench design that we posted at the time of this video going up about a month ago. Now this here is just going to basically show you guys some little details, some little optional features and stuff like that. You can add to your trenches to give them a little bit more life and kind of uh, just bring a whole new, I guess, character sense of uh, actual realism to your trenches. The original tutorial was just basically going over the simple structure of the trenches and really just building the basic design. This uh, part here will kind of go into some little details and um, little things that you can add to the trenches. Again, just to kind of make them look a little more realistic and especially if you're walking through the trenches to kind of get more of a vibe or more of a feeling that you're really actually in some World War One trenches. Um, I tried to find as many pictures of, as I could and tried to look at references here and there to try to get um, some ideas and try to build some really nice um, kind of design concepts and ideas that would actually work for um, these trenches. So uh, with that, let's kind of go ahead and start moving into the tutorial. Uh, what's going to be is the video is going to be split into sections, so each individual thing I'm going to be covering will be covered in a different section. So if you uh, want to, take a look at the, the uh, video description. There will be timestamps that will take you to each feature that I'm going to talk about and show you guys how to do. Um, and there will also be um, sections on the video encoder bar, which you can go and skip ahead to whatever section you're most interested in. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into... Um, some of the features we can add to our trench here. As you can see, we have our trench design here that we basically built um, in the uh, actual tutorial version and kind of uh, got a basic general design layout. So as you can see, it's pretty simplistic, nothing really too complicated or really crazy going on with it. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and basically spruce it up and turn it into a whole new trench. The first thing we're gonna use is a design of corrugated sheets that would be put over the uh, trenches to provide extra protection. And basically what this was was just very thin um, plates of sheet metal that would just go across the trenches here to protect from a little bit of explosions, shrapnel, um, various things like that that you know could impact soldiers in the trenches. And to do this it's super simple. For our core gauge sheets we can go ahead and go from any point really in our trench so it doesn't really matter and we're going to be going ahead and taking top slabs and using top slabs. And we're just going to place down a row of top slabs It's just going to go across here, across the top of the uh, trench here, using top slabs of andesite. And to give it a more corrugated type look, we're going to take stone buttons on like that to kind of make little ridges there on the um, sheets. So you'll see, you're just going to be putting something like that in. It's super simple, and we'll go ahead and put a piece that goes along right here. And it's just going to flow across here. So basically it's just designed to be some sheet metal that was draped across or just thrown across the trench real quick to again provide a little bit of extra protection. They aren't really designed to be walked on uh, per se, uh, but they are designed to basically propel protect some of the troops on the inside here or just kind of form a little bit of a roofing over the trench. And uh, you can even go ahead and go three wide uh, with it. I wouldn't go any more, more than three wide with it, uh, just personal preference. Um, I think it looks uh, best at this kind of level here. And one thing I also recommend also is with the sheets, make sure you have the sandbags kind of built up. Uh, full blocks, probably more preferably uh, where it does connect, um, just so that it kind of fits a little bit better into the overall kind of structure and look of the um, the trench itself. So that's kind of a basic design there using these kind of uh, simple design to kind of add a little bit more life. And especially when you're walking through the trenches, it kind of gives you a more kind of confined look to the trenches. Really just makes you kind of feel a little bit more... Um, you know, like you're actually in them. Um, so that's one thing you can do here, and also just to kind of throw a little bit more of detail into these corrugated sheets, you can go ahead and take some some slabs here that we used around the ground, and kind of put a little bit on here. It shows like some mounds of dirt maybe got kicked up from ex some explosions, um, some craters and stuff like that. Uh, but I wouldn't go too crazy with it. Just kind of put them here and there for it, and whatever you think looks good. And you can see here, it just kind of sprucings it up a little bit, it makes it breaks it up a little bit, and um, definitely looks really cool. So that right there is one technique and let's go ahead and move on to our next. The next design we're going to cover is basically how to build a ramp over the trenches. Now it's very common um, for trenches to have ramps over them for vehicles to cross and for um, infantry uh, especially in mass charges um, and this would be definitely more apparent in uh, some of the reserve trenches uh, so not really frontline trenches but 
more of the rear ones so that they can easily transport uh, equipment and stuff like that across the trenches um, using vehicles or um, carriages or whatever really and these kind of bridges or ramps really made it a lot easier to do so now to build these pretty simple um, you can go ahead and do three wide ones you can go ahead and prob possibly do four wide I'd probably stick at the max and maybe uh, or sorry my bad technically they would be five wide so I would say probably between five and uh, four wide are probably gonna be the two best ones you could do you could also do a three wide one but I wouldn't recommend going um, anything uh, lower than three or anything above five for these ramps. So uh, for this ramp, we're just going to go ahead and do a four wide one. So we're going to go ahead and kind of use our pillars here to kind of line ourselves up. So for this, uh, we'll have our pillars here. We'll kind of build it with the natural pillars for the supports here for the trench. And for this, we're going to be going ahead and go into this section here. And we want to go ahead and place down a spruce upside down stair, which is going to be basically coming off these two uh, pillars here or uh, basically these two pillars here and then these two over here and those will kind of form the supports there for the actual uh, ramp itself now for the ramp itself uh, we want to go and then break uh, these buttons here and we're going to do a row of one two three four five oak wood logs sideways same thing right here a row of five like this across and we then want to go and go to the middle spot so this block right here between these stairs and we're going to place down a row across the center there and then these sections here, we're going to place down a oak wood log here in the corners. And we're going to delete these sandbags and we'll place down a row of two of our spruce wood uh, blocks just like that across. So uh, we basically get a design that looks like this here for the frame of our bridge. We'll go ahead and fill in the spaces here on the inside with uh, some stripped oak wood. Or sorry, stripped spruce wood as I think it looks pretty good. And we can also take some stone buns here, place them down on top of these oak wood blocks here and uh, we can even place some along the sides here as well just for like a little bit of, you know showing a little bit more fortified look and on the sides here as well and all that stuff to kind of show maybe some rivets or some kind of bolts and stuff like that or nails kind of pulling this thing together so that's pretty much the basic design for that now obviously we have these kind of steep drop-offs and we kind of make want to make this look like it flows naturally into the ground now for this we'll be going ahead and grabbing our dirt material so from the tutorial, you may recall we used pot soil and coarse dirt as it has a really nice kind of muddy and uh, dug up dirt look to it. Um, and we can also use our dark oak wood and spruce wood slabs as they're the closest brown colored or dirt colored slabs we have for kind of showing like more gradual inclines. Um, so we're going to basically, you know, just kind of build a ramp out here to the side. And again, this doesn't have to be anything specific um, in design wise. You just kind of want a little bit of a natural type flow to it. You don't want anything drastic. Uh, just something very gradual, very simple. And this is going to kind of be similar to how you guys did the uh, kind of, I guess, siding to the uh, trenches here, the dirt mounds. Um, it's very similar to that. You just want something gradual. You don't want some a super gradual drop off. Um, and we're just going to kind of use our slabs and our uh, full blocks there just to kind of make this. And as you can see, it's pretty simple little ramp there and it kind of extends a little bit forward of the trench and that's what we want and obviously we would continue our uh, you know dirt forward a little bit and all that stuff and put our grass in and wherever we want it and all that stuff uh, but theoretically if this was a kind of path that would be using quite a bit we don't want to have grass here we definitely want to make this area look a little bit more trampled as it kind of comes forward and uh, moves into no man's land or uh, some of the uh, kind of areas between uh, front line and uh, reserve trenches so um, just kind of a idea for you guys there again for that and we would do the same thing back here so we'd have this kind of flow down this way here uh, leaning toward the other direction and this design will really work um, on the fronts or backs of trenches you know again wherever you're kind of putting this um, so you can see here this is our Theoretically, this our front line would be that in that direction there, and then our reserve trenches would be back in that way. So, but you could have this in this kind of corner piece here, and it would kind of go forward. Or, for example, that bridge could be over here and kind of go that way. So, it's a very versatile design. It would definitely work for um, basically whatever kind of uh, scenario you're trying to go for. So again, we'll kind of have this uh, work its way back, kind of be a little gradual here. Might throw a little bit of grass up up in the top sections here just to add a little bit more detail to it around the trench portion but uh, other than that that's pretty much all we're really going to do for that and as you'll see 
You get a cool little design here. Again, we'll have the same thing happen back here where this road would kind of uh, lead back here, kind of be a little more trampled uh, per se. And uh, we can even use a, leave it to shovel. And if you right click, you uh, create the grass paths. Again, really nice design here for uh, showing, you know, tracks or something like that. Um, so we can have it kind of go back here and you can have tracks of vehicles kind of flow out to the sides here. Um, again, it's kind of, you're kind of, it's, it's kind of unlimited really what you can do here. Um, this is kind of just an idea to get you guys started and go in the right direction. But we can have like different, you know, tracks here for vehicles. Uh, basically break off and kind of go in different directions or something like that. And right here we'll do basically the same thing. And, you know, something kind of like that. And I mean, you kind of get the general idea. Um of how this would kind of all go and you know you can just imagine all this stuff kind of being put together and really creating yourself a pretty cool looking kind of battlefield and i mean the same thing here with the tracks can be done with the pot soil and coarse dirt and all that stuff and um all that so basically that's just some general ideas there i mean pretty simple stuff uh this ramp here for vehicles going up if you're having infantry uh then it would you would obviously disregard the tracks but you know you kind of get a general idea and it again just adds a really nice look to it you can even use this design if you just want to kind of put a more fortified type roof on your trenches. So really there's a lot of playability with this design. Uh, but that's really about it for basically building the bridges slash ramps over the trenches. Alright guys, so the next thing we're going to be covering is how to build a ramp for... Um, or basically a more of a... Alright guys, so the next thing we're going to cover is basically building a um, kind of a ladder that leads up from the trenches. I guess would be the best way to describe it and uh, this was here is obviously a common design that would be used obviously as the troops need a way to easily scale the size of the walls of the trenches and uh, rush in case of they were doing some sort of um, mass kind of uh, I guess uh, push toward a enemy position and these here would be commonly placed pretty uh, you know frequently around the trenches and especially in areas where um, a lot of troops would be positioned and uh, they're really sim it's a really simple design really to do and it kind of again is something that you can change the overall size of so for example we'll go ahead and we can build one we could actually build a couple right here since we have a bridge here it'd be likely that there would be maybe vehicles that would be able to cross here um, larger amounts of infantry so we can imagine that this might be a good place to have a big push of infantry so we'll put some ladders in here for the troops to basically use to get out of it now for this uh, we are going to be going ahead and going to this section here and we'll make a small one on this side so we'll go ahead and delete these sandbags here in our wall and we'll go ahead and just basically put um, some rows of stairs like this going up and a row of spruce with trapdoors on the top here. Now what this uh, then does is kind of creates this step like look. We'll go ahead and place down a uh, lever which uh, we'll actually swap this out for a lever here. Have a lever facing downwards like this and we did delete that block there we do have some wood exposed so we'll go ahead and kind of make sure we close that up there. Uh, but we'll have a lever there, lever there, end rod here, lever that goes down like that so a little bit of like a hand row here to kind of help the troops get up. And then on top of this log here, we'll have a lever as well, like that. And that's all you have, just a simple little ladder there. Um, you can even swap it out for real ladders if you really want to, to make it a little bit more kind of playable uh, for maps or something like that. Uh, but that's just kind of a small design and you can do a little bit of a larger one. So let's say over here, I want to build one. And let's say I want to actually move my post here. So I'll have a post that goes up this direction here. And then I'll delete this section of the trenches like that. Now, um, in doing so, I'm going to go ahead and take spruce wood stairs, place down a row across, a narrow row. We're going to place down end rod here, lever, lever up here. It's going to be flicked toward the forward direction. We're going to go ahead and put a sandbag here just to again, kind of fill that space in. And then we're going to place our trap doors across this section here. And we can place down a lever right here as well. So, as you can see here, we now have some places here for the troops to actually stand up and actually. Uh, climb up and out of the trenches and basically use to push forward um, toward enemy positions and again these can be built however big you really want them to I would recommend probably uh, anything less than five uh, wide would be perfect but uh, you know again you can kind of do whatever you guys want um, but they're perfect they kind of fit in good here and there they can really be put anywhere throughout the trench and uh, just add a little nice little detail bit to um, the trench walls uh, anyways, that right there is it for basically our 
uh, kind of ladders for the troops to exit the uh, trenches. All right, guys, so moving into our next design, it's kind of a more little simple uh, addition you can put in your trenches, and really you could, you could put this in no man's land, you could put this in a lot of places. Uh, but basically what this is, is to kind of make a little bit of a sniper's uh, position. Now, um, sniper's position, also going to include uh, basically making kind of a decoy uh, type stick. Now for this, we're going ahead and going to this section here. Again, this is something that can be placed anywhere along the front lines of your trenches. So realistically, you can place this anywhere. Um, I'm just going to be placing it in a certain area I'm going to choose. So I'm going to choose right here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically delete these sandbags. And I'm going to place down two dark oak fence gates across like this. I'm going to open them up toward the front there of the trench. Now, when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and then create, make uh, a banner here. So this banner I'm going to make is going to be a green banner. That's going to have a black line that goes through the center of the banner. And that green line that goes like across the top there. I'm not going to show exactly how to kind of make it in the loom because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. But again, just a black line there in the center and a green line across the top. When we put this on the side here of the fence gate, you're going to see that we create a little hole like so. And we're going to place down a green banner to the side of it. And basically what we just created here is a little sniper's hole for the rifle. And we have basically a gun shield here to protect the sniper. So, simple design there. Sniper's a huge part of World War II uh, and basically, or not World War II, but I mean, obviously World War II, but World War I also in basically picking off um, any uh, engineering units or just any troops that might be from the enemy going ahead and trying to cross um, no man's land. So, we can do this and we can also take some green carpet here and put it across the top of the fence gates to kind of give it a little bit more of a overall type protection type look there. So, simple little uh, kind of sniper. Uh, shield there and sniper position and you can kind of uh, change this area up a little bit if you uh, really want to we can add in maybe some sandbags that they would be kind of resting in and we can even grab ourselves maybe a zombie head to represent maybe like a little um, ammo box here ammunition storage located right there but we can just imagine here a sniper would be resting on this kind of perch um, and they would be basically firing on any targets they really see um, so kind of maybe give it a little bit more of a kind of comfortable type look to it. So something like this. So the sniper would be basically laying here up against this and, you know, peeping through that little hole there to uh, hopefully hit some targets. Uh, but yeah, simple little design there. Nothing, again, too crazy, but uh, works pretty nice. Now, what really complements this, this as well is basically using the decoy heads. Now, this is something here that... Um, was used during World War II and World War I. Uh, basically, it's just designed to uh, attract the attention of possible enemy snipers and theoretically give away their position. Now, you can make these little uh, sniper posts and you can have them actually look legit so they're, you know, actual sniper posts being used, but you can also kind of maybe uh, add a little more to them by placing down a spruce wood fence post, a end rod, and then a player head on top there. So, kind of gives the illusion of a decoy head and when you look at it from a distance there, you know, you would, enemy snipers would shoot it, thinking it was an actual target, and, um, you know, give away their position. And you can put these um, in random places throughout your trench here. So, uh, we'll say right here, for example, we want to we want a decoy head, we can put a head right here. So, I mean, you can just kind of put little decoy heads here and there. I wouldn't recommend putting a lot of them, um, but you can, you know, again, put them here and there, and you can even have some kind of hidden behind objects uh, around No Man's Land and stuff like that to hopefully draw enemy snipers um but yeah kind of a cool little design there so a little bit of a uh, sniper equipment and stuff like that for the trenches and uh let's go ahead and move into our next section all right guys the next thing we'll be covering is dugouts now dugouts were basically where the infantry that would be stationed in these trenches would basically eat sleep um kind of use for shelter uh was the main kind of um purpose before uh, but basically all this really is is going to be just some little dugout sections into our trench so we can see here we have our kind of fire step here uh, where our troops would be standing to fire so obviously we don't want to be using this area for uh, building these dugouts and these dugouts will be perfect for the back walls of our trenches so that the sides of the walls opposite the front line so the front line here now all we're going to do here is kind of go to our section so we'll pick this section here and we'll kind of break out um, these blocks and we'll kind of break out a uh, square two by two square out into the side here and we'll kind of do this here for however many we want so we'll kind of just maybe do these three in the corner now uh, you can put these as frequently as you want or you can kind of space them out uh, really doesn't 
matter too much, but just kind of, you know, trying to make it look, you know, somewhat reasonable. Now, what we're going to do here is, now that we have this broken out, is we're going to be going ahead and taking our uh, dark oak wood and spruce wood, and we're going to kind of replace these blocks here in the ground uh, with uh, those slabs and stuff like that to kind of show the ground clean down. And we'll go ahead and break down one more block underneath here, and we'll replace our dirt, or have our dirt right there. Now we'll also go ahead and make sure that we take our oak wood posts all the way down. And we're going to have the same thing happening over here on this side as well. And this right here will be broken out, and that will dirt. We can also take our coarse dirt and kind of work it in the sides here of the sides of the trench here, just kind of add a little bit more variation in the dirt. Again, not 100% necessary, but something like this. And we can also go ahead and then grab ourselves some spruce wood stairs. And we'll kind of place some like this here to the side. And uh, kind of create these little dugout type designs. Um, we could also have this extend forward. So uh, kind of giving you guys a few options here on what you can do. So we can place down a row of oak wood here and maybe some spruce wood stairs like this. So it uh, kind of gives you a little bit of options and playability for this. So you can kind of alter around whatever works for you. But basically we get these little dugout type sections which uh, kind of are for troops to kind of roll down and you know use to take cover. Now uh, we can even spruce in this area up by putting in like some beds um, for example and for this we'll use maybe some green and brown wool basically military type uh, colors and put in some kind of you know beds in here um, and then we can also have like some pillows if you want to if you're ever feeling if you're feeling that generous uh, we can give them some snow here for little pillows again nothing too fancy we're not trying to make it super grand but just a kind of simple design and for this uh, kind of grouping here we'll kind of you know make it look a little bit um, kind of more lived in um, so we can have some green banners which would theoretically be maybe some military bl issued blankets or something like that we can have it kind of draped over here it's kind of like a curtain type thing um, could be clothes hanging up here uh, we can even go ahead and grab some chains maybe have a row of chains that maybe kind of works its way over at an angle across the space like so and we can have maybe some banners kind of hanging on it so kind of representing maybe some clothes uh, that are hanging up or some jackets that were caught in the rain and they're kind of being hung up to dry or something like that uh, we could also put like a fireplace in here uh, for basically cooking or something like that so you know some uh, the troops trying to cook some stuff and we can even kind of embed it here in the ground a little bit you know don't be afraid to you know expand this a little bit in this direction but we can have a little fireplace here for them to you know kind of stay warm or cook and you know theoretically I don't know how accurate it would necessarily be due to you know trying to keep the trenches on the down low but again just kind of giving you guys again options that you can do for your trenches if you do want to um, you know we could put some you know food here or something like that so maybe uh some like something or whatever some slop who knows um, just kind of going crazy I mean as you can see it really isn't anything too fancy that we're doing here it's real basic stuff um, just kind of trying to make this area look a little lived in and these aren't you know necessarily going to be you know the places where they cook where they all cook food or whatever this just might be for like heating the cup of tea or staying warm or something like that but you know it's not gonna be anything too complex and crazy and you know we have a little design that looks like this here it's real simple stuff and we can even throw in some barrels here um, for water or something that's stored and just leave that space open so hopefully this kind of gives you a little idea here of what you guys can do for this section um, obviously it's a corner space so your corner spaces are going to vary from your straight areas but the same kind of concept applies you know you don't have to do anything super crazy to create some you know pretty cool little uh, designs at least I think in you know my opinion and that right there's pretty much uh, what we can do for this section here I'm trying to figure out how to actually put out the fire and I thought it was just using water potions there we go 
Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, you kind of you kind of get an idea of what you can do. Um, those are kind of basically the basic idea I was able to come up from dugouts. Um, a little bit hard to kind of actually show them too too much because they're very kind of detailed uh, in real life and kind of more like just like dug out into the dirt but I think it came up pretty good and a little simple design there and hopefully they at least gives you some ideas or get you moving in the right directions and all that stuff. The last thing we're going to be covering for this tutorial is going to be uh, kind of the f ammo shelves that were put in the trenches. Now uh, these here are really simple designs and um, they work best in your sandbag type position so for example this position here. Now what we'll do here to kind of make this design is we are going to be going ahead and replacing some of these sandstone blocks here with uh, empty space to kind of create a uh, design here for a little ammo shelf. We're going to go and put trapdoors across the top here and then a green shulker box to this side and then a uh, dark liquid sign on the side of that box like that and very simply just an air uh, birchwood trapdoor right there and we kind of create a little ammo shelf. and. Uh, we can even replace the block behind it there with some spruce wood planks just to kind of make it a little bit more a part of the trench. Uh, but you can go ahead and put these in the sides of the walls here of our trenches. So we could, uh, you know, theoretically put some here. Um, you can really put them anywhere uh, where we have our sandbags especially. Uh, those That's where they look best. But you can put them right here also as well. We can have uh, an ammo box here followed by a second one or something like that. And put this trap door down and place that block behind there and you know you kind of have some ammo boxes there kind of stationed on the sides of the walls there you know not a super crazy design but something simple and something that kind of works for what we're trying to go for and for example also in this section here we can kind of have some smaller ones by placing down some zombie heads here in the section so just something to kind of think about you get little ammo boxes there um, you know and you can even put some down here in our little dugouts or something like that we can have some you know, ammo kind of being st stored or held down here or something like that. Who knows? Uh, and you could also put these little boxes here on the firing shelves and all that stuff. So we'll have like a little box there. We can put a box down right here. So just some little s spots where ammunition is going to be stored. And this would especially be good in positions where there's going to be a lot of concentration of infantry or near machine guns or... Um, something of that sort. So that right there is just a couple little things you can do to kind of liven up your trenches. As you can see we have this one trench thing here. We did some very basic um, additions to it and we really did create a pretty cool little design there and um, hopefully those five designs are going to be useful for that. Anyways guys, that's going to pretty much conclude part two of our tutorial, adding in some additional details. Uh, I'll probably be doing another part or something here and there when I come up with some more uh, little additional details you can add to it. Um, also looking at trying to explore into doing some machine gun type nests and stuff like that, a couple different designs that you guys could use, um, as well as covering some other little features and stuff like that to add on to the trench future in the future, and also some uh, larger kind of builds we're doing little um, kitchens and uh, latrines and stuff like that and maybe even some bunk houses and stuff like that in the actual trench systems themselves so uh, definitely feel free to look forward to that if you um, do have any ideas or anything that you would really are really eager to see for the trench uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments below look forward to hearing what you guys have to say and hopefully maybe putting some of your ideas actually into um, into the uh, the future tutorials for this trench system as we continue to expand upon it and see some more parts uh, slowly come out for this in the future. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for this design and uh, these uh, five designs here for uh, your trench system. Hopefully you guys do enjoy and without without further ado, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been great to it for and I'll see you guys next time.